Jan Stein. Join me as I do interviews with leaders in the field of artificial intelligence from across the world. We speak about the business relevance of artificial intelligence and we also speak about the future. Is it to be feared or to be embraced? Please subscribe at my website for updates on future interviews. Hello and thank you for joining me again. Today's conversation is all about conversational artificial intelligence, chatbots and the future, future of that kind of technology. I'm joined by Antoine Paliso, the co-founder and the CEO of Fin Chatbot. We really had a very interesting conversation and I invite you to listen in to what we spoke about. Antoine, thank you so much for, for joining us. Today we're going to talk about bots and chatbots. You know, a lot of people, and I think we can blame Hollywood for this, when they hear the word robot or bot, they see these evil creatures that's going to take over the planet. Maybe that'll happen one day, hopefully after our time. But um, talking about chatbots, what is a chatbot? If people don't know anything about it, what's the best way to explain it? Yes, it's a, it's, um, it's a great question. So we try to rename chatbots conversational AI solution. Uh, chatbot has this maybe a bit negative ima image like Skynet is taking over the world and so on. So we try, it's really about conversation. It's creating automated conversation that can service customers the best way possible. It's all about customers today. Uh, brands need to engage with customers 24 seven, seven. They need to be available for customers at any time. There's more and more, um, you know, expectations from customers to have brands available when they want. And that's where we play is really about creating those fantastic customer experiences automated uh, in a chat base. Because today we're using our smartphone to chat. We chat to our friends, family, mm -hmm. colleagues, soon, or if not already, directly to businesses. But businesses don't necessarily have the workforce to be 24-7 available. And that's where we step in. That's where we, we play a, a role. It's, it's true that you say that, you know, if I think of all the people I'm in contact with, we chat on LinkedIn, we chat on Facebook, we chat on WhatsApp. It is, I don't know when last I heard their voices on an actual call. You know, and the same, I guess, with the call center, like everyone, I hate calling and waiting. And then by the time they access my account, they still, you know, I want it to be intuitive. I want them to estimate what the problem will be you know what look i think a lot of companies are on this rush on on chat or bot chatbot kind of yes. technology what do you see is the biggest mistake or mistakes that companies make when they look at this kind of technology um yeah it's it's a great question again so um, i think one of the uh, clear mistake is underestimating the management work managing this solution um, really, where, where we see a lot of mistakes are happening is first, um, a lot of focus is placed on probably designing the most complex type of experience, which is customer service. Customer service, you need to have um, a really substantial amount of data around what customers are asking and how to answer to them. Because it's great to understand that your customer wants this, but if your response as the bot is to say, uh, in order to get this, call our call center. This is the worst customer experience. So uh, the, the, the way we envision this solution is on one side, building the understanding, the intent classification of what customers are asking and creating, linking the different processes to achieve the experience inside the chat. Let's say you want to modify your um, bank account details because your insurance company uh, debits you every month and you, you're changing banks. Um, you're going to chat to the bot, ask to the bot, I want to update my banking details. And instead of the bot saying to you, call our call center, we can do it straight into the window, straight into the chat. And that's really, really powerful. It's giving access to different, to multiple services to, to customers and offering them the possibility to complete this action in the same environment, in the same channel. Mm, that's incredible. Let's get to Fin Chatbot, uh, Antoine. I think yes. it's been going for about seven or eight odd years. You're the co founder and CEO. Um, I saw one of your recent chats with uh, Nick Bradshaw where you st still think of yourself as a startup, which is a great thing. Yes. Uh, 
So, so tell us about what does the company do and what makes you unique um, from, from some of your competitors potentially? Uh, so ju just maybe a slight correction, we're three and a half years old. So oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just, just uh, I wish we would be But it be feels like here. seven. Yeah, it feels like seven. I have a bit of gray hair, so yeah, I concur, it feels like seven. But yeah, we're three and a half years old. We're still fairly like a like small team, about 20 people in the organization. So we really um, see ourselves still as a startup, but with our portfolio of clients, we're really engaging with enterprise level type of, of prospects. So um, we, we really put a lot of effort in, in this education of how this technology works, in guiding our customers to make sure we deliver a first time right, exceptional user experience. Because at the end of the day, it's all about users. They are going to use the solution. They are going to, um, to engage with the brand. So we need to make sure they are satisfied by, by this experience. So um, yeah. Um, we're actually about to close a new round of funding, which is exciting for us in the, in a COVID uh, timing uh, and signing really amazing deals that are going to take us uh, on a more global scale with our clients, uh, working um, uh, all over the continent uh, at first and then looking at other opportunities maybe in Europe and then and in the US. But yeah, growing. That's what That's I can amazing. say. That's amazing. I also assume one of the big use cases for this technology is also um, not just out side of your organizations, i.e. customers, but also internal. We think of some of the banks that have 40 or 50,000 people. Have you had customers engage you for like client or, or call it um, employee experience kind of uh, solutions? We, we are doing more and more work for big organization, let's say a um, couple of thousands of employees that would like to communicate better with their employees from a, just a sharing information, to um, giving access uh, to the employees to certain information, news, um, uh, updates, etc. Especially in a remote environment now, where the information is completely uh, uh, spread and, and dematerialized, you don't really have access to um, uh, a meeting room anymore. I mean, it's 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 quite challenging now. So, um, yeah, HR capability. We're seeing a lot of traction there to help. Um, just you know survey employees how do you feel today just getting those little information help the organization from a higher level strategic level to just get information from their staff so really really powerful and very simple um, um, experience to build so yeah okay what if uh, the customers have um, concerns around data privacy gdpr for pr um, banking regulations in other words you, you uh, inferred to it earlier, so if I can change my banking detail with my insurance company with a conversation. Yes. How do you answer those concerns around those kind of topics? Yeah, absolutely. So as a third party player, we uh, have a whole uh, sort of encryption capability that we put in place. Um, and we can pretty much, if I can simply explain that, use a pipe that we don't, we don't see, we don't have access to. So we just, uh, the data is just transferred directly from the user to the client. And we just act as the uh, intermediary that doesn't see what's happening. So we have different level of encryption, different level of uh, on-premises or in the cloud-based solution, depending on the interaction. But obviously one of the lengthy process to work with big enterprise level is to be approved from an architectural point of view, security point of view, having all those documentation ready, which we have and, and working with uh, almost all the big banks at, at this stage. So, um, so yeah, it's a, it's a challenge as a startup to meet those requirements. It's not impossible, but you really need to have a, uh, the time time to get those right but now that we have three that we are three and a half years old we we start getting all those requirements on point Super. um I, i've seen what you speak before antoine and i remember you you spoke about the fact that you know in our country like in, in many others we've got all these different languages you also have yeah. different customer personas and i remember from from the talk i attended you spoke about something like the the, the bot or the ai can pick up obviously the language but also yes. the persona, so whether it's a, like a hipster, young dude yes. who wants to speak in that language or it's an older investor. So maybe take us through that because I found that fascinating. 
Yes, so, so this is really where we invest a lot uh, from our capacity around natural language processing, natural language understanding, and, and on a broader level, any AI application that can help the customer uh, in different ways. Yeah. So from, um, um, we, we, we strongly believe uh, there is a massive opportunity to uh, give access to education around financial product. And, and in mm-hmm. broader level, education is a, becomes a massive opportunity for, for the continent. But we, we strongly believe, and I can take a couple of examples, uh, in Africa, in South Africa, sorry, you have about um, 70 to 80% of cars on the road that are not insured. So it's not only a, a, a price uh, issue, a price sensitive issue. It's actually a lack of education. Why is it important to be insured? Why, uh, what risk do you have of driving your car without being insured? Um, so uh, this kind of statement brought uh, us, gave us a couple of ideas around, okay, what if we try to educate me- uh, better? So can we bring a level of gamification in this interaction? and try to educate a bit better, explaining the different um, uh, capabilities of such a product. Or maybe it's a language issue. Maybe because it's only explained in English that a, a beautiful country that has 11 official languages um, is uh, excludes part of their audience, part of its audience. So that's where we, we felt bringing education in different languages would create a, um, a better inclusion. In, in this capability. Um, on top of that, we are adding a data science capability, being able to create personas of audience. So understanding and helping the brands understanding that they don't only have one audience, they have hundreds of different audiences. Why? Because a 20 years old from Cape Town female would, have to, would like to have a certain interaction with the insurance or bank um, but a 60 years old from Johannesburg, male, may ha- would like another experience. And I'm just taking completely extreme examples, but the idea is to build that audience capability, that personas creation with the brand and co-build that. So we, we share the IP and that's for me, the real IP of such a technology is the database, the knowledge of the audience. And that's where we want to go and create those different. So let's say, we define one objective, but maybe hundreds of ways to get there, hundred ways to open a bank account. Same objective, but different experiences. And that's what customers want. Um, extreme personalization, extreme contextualization. That's what works really, really well to sell better and create this brand differentiation that will make the difference in the market shares. Absolutely. And just I want to latch on to, to what we're talking about. I think the gold of this for an organization is the data you're harvesting. Um, Do you then work with the organization to look at the data, say over a six month period, look at patterns, because you might have to change some of the questions, some of the workflow, decision trees, et cetera. Um, Or is that up to the customer to do that? Or can Fern Chatbot help organizations with that? Yes. So, so um, we initially three and a half years ago, when we started with, we said we are a software provider. We provide a software and Mr. Client, do whatever you want to do, invest however you want to do and, and try to make it work. And we realize it's not the good formula. It's not what uh, customers are expecting today. Our clients, sorry, it's for financial service providers. Um, they are expecting us to guide them, to hold their hands, share the knowledge, share the IP, but co-build this capability together. So we created a business unit in our organization called Customer Success. Um, and their role is to make sure that the butt is always up, that um, those experiences are providing satisfaction to the customers. And we share this knowledge to the, to the client and, and you know, build that capability, improve that capability over time. So we don't want to charge like a, a software fee, like a setup fee to design the solution. We go straight into what we call a license management fee. And that is to finance the experts that we put um, uh, for the organization to, to create this conversation, managing, managing it, iterating it, and make sure we increase this conversion, conversion rate, this satisfaction rate, this engagement rate, and so on. Mm, okay, because next I wanted to ask you about how do you commercialize it? Is it um, yes. 
this, I assume there's a potentially a per seat or per bot cost. This might be an upfront cost from a consulting point of view, or how would it work? So we 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 believe that um, this market is quite sensitive when it comes to investing in software, and uh, we 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 don't have the you know the uh, the the workforce of a, an Accenture that can charge co um, high consulting fee to do a specific mission. So we said let's scale down. We do only a few things, but we do them very well, which means we can bring on our own capability automation and, and easy integration. So we're integrating more and more administrative system like uh, uh, Genesis, uh, uh, Salesforce, um, we have also root insurance and a couple of big administrative uh, players that are already plug and play in our organization. So it means that the integration work for a client that has already an existing relationship with one of those partners is really, really quick. So our time to market is generally between four to six weeks, meaning between four to six weeks, you get your um, uh, autonomous 24 seven available agent that can really provide a fantastic customer experience. Um, and from that perspective, we put in place our customer success management team that manages the bot and gets an incentive on the success of the conversation. And that's our pricing model. A licensing model, depending on the complexity of the experience you want. Is it a, a lead generation, sales, customer service? Do you want AI? Do you want data science or not? So you can really start by putting different boxes together and start with a fairly low cost. Like our, our first price is the, the cost of one call center agent seat. That's it. And you get a bot that can replace 24 seven this, this agent. And we scale that up by, by really identifying what are the key KPIs of, of our client and building that we want to be incentivized on the same KPIs as our decision maker in the organization. So that we are aligning the expectation. And if we succeed, our decision maker succeed as well. Okay. I think there's a clear return on investment. Um, yes. What about the fear of people losing their jobs, which I think is inevitable with this kind of technology? Um, but if, if in, in our local banks it's unionized and governed, how do you deal with those kind of um, questions from customers? Yeah, so two, two feedback. The first one is customers are king. So if, if you want to force them to have a bad customer experience, they're going to go somewhere else. So if, if you just want to ask a simple query to, to the bank and you have to go to an authentication layer with an agent, the, the agent validates that, uh, forward you to the right service, and you spend 20 minutes to get access to your account balance, it's, it's, you're not going to keep the customers. Secondly, we don't foresee replacing 100% of agents. We foresee doing extremely well the top 80% of queries. But then when you need this extreme personalization, this, um, this level of, you know, uh, uh, your specific case is unique and I'm going to take care of you, that's where we hand over. And that's where we feel agents are very valuable. We don't want agents to answer dummy questions. We mm -hmm. want agents to answer important um, difficult questions that need advisory that need you know all those kind of elements so we foresee and that's what we've been doing is actually working with the call center team rather than um uh, you know um, uh, taking over the job and there's really um, a value that that's where we see uh, a chat and call center working really well together is one is taking over the dummy non-empathetic queries and the other one is really focusing on the emp empathetic queries. I like that. It's the, almost the idea of cobotics, where this technology can help us do our jobs better. I can imagine if you're a call center agent and you have to answer the same questions hour after hour. But now, if by the time the customer reaches me, all that, like you say, dummy questions are done, but now they really need my advice. You know, the example I often use is, you know, if, if tomorrow morning I see my bank account is empty, I don't want to speak to a bot. I want a person to speak with me. Uh, exactly. If you talk about healthcare, I mean, if you're diagnosed with cancer, for instance, I don't want a bot to take me through that. I want a human being. Exactly. Now, AI can help the diagnosis, but I think that idea of empathy and, and um, 
um, what do you call it, emotional intelligence, all those things. I think we're still far away from AI doing that. Absolutely. Touch on next, on, a bit on the future. The f- first thing I quickly want to ask you, Antoine, is that, that your technology, is it mostly text-based so type or is it also voice recognition? Where are you at the moment? At this stage, we, um, um, we only doing text because we want and we promote ourselves as doing the best. And adding voice in a country that has 11 official languages and 11 different tonalities of saying different words is, is very, very complex. Yeah. So we're doing text. Uh, we want to do it very, very well. And as soon as we master that, we'll move to voice, surely. Yeah. And I think you have to have the, the size and the investment of a Google or IBM Watson or something like that to really do voice well. I am, a few weeks back, got myself a Google Home. And yeah. my son has now figured out how to use it. So he's switching on IoT devices in my house. He's six. So before I know it, the kettle is on or... In fact, and I quickly want to demonstrate it, just the lights on me at the moment is my Google Home is um, connected to a smart plug. So I say, hey, Google, switch off the lights. See, there we go. Nice. <laughs> I say, hey, Google, switch on the lights. And, um, but it's now, oh, it's not working. Hey, Google, switch on the lights. There we go. So, nice. uh, <laughs> But this what you don't con- say, what you don't say is your son is on the switch, right? <laughs> <laughs> no one will know. <laughs> no, he's, at, he's at school, but yeah, you never know. Maybe I'll, I'll cut out this demo because people might go, hmm, yeah. wonder about that. Um, <laughs> we, we, we spoke of, or you, you referred to conversational AI. So I want to talk a little bit about the AI element and also going into the future. Um, yes. How does artificial intelligence currently work behind the scenes with your technology and where is this going over the next five or 10 years? Mm, uh, a lot of organizations are using um, the term AI as almost a generic way of saying there is some applied statistics, data science. Um, we, we still promote ourselves as a combination between uh, data science and just human humans that are analyzing the data and implementing those level of automation. We still really um, are working in parallel and not handing over completely our systems to an AI. We need to improve those algorithms. We need to improve the, the capabilities, but the core fundamentals are from a tonality point of view. So we're working with different tones of conversation such as uh, millennial, as you were saying, or hipster type of approach, uh, more formal, business, uh, etc., and try to see which tone is working better and automatically change the tonality of the conversation if we feel the person doesn't feel uh, comfortable with. Um, another element is the flow of the conversation. So how do you know that asking the ID number at the very, very first question is going to make your audience feel comfortable to engage? So we try to change all this order of question and and understand what is the best way to sell an insurance policy or to open a bank account or to offer a credit a loan. Um, so this is that, those are the two capabilities. And the third one is really working on um, African dialects, African languages, using this uh, solution to bring educational content in order to sell better and service better the customers. What about things that's a lot closer to home? I mean, I think there's obviously this huge commercial aspect to this, but things like, which is such a terrible thing in our country, especially now, um, domestic abuse, for instance. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this technology being used where uh, somebody who is a victim of that could speak to a bot to really help them very quickly get the right help connect to the right uh, emergency services etc uh, it's maybe not a focus on, on your side but have you seen yeah w- w- this technology really helping people in a non-commercial way if you would yeah so so i think i i haven't seen in south africa this domestic violence idea and i think it's a brilliant idea i've seen that elsewhere i think in asia they have uh, they have this capability available, as well as like, you know, um, sensitive subject, like uh, uh, you don't necessarily want to talk to a human, but you 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 want to get some support, like um, suicide lines and stuff like that. They offer this, this, this kind of capability. But the best example is COVID. 
uh, COVID to bring information, to, um, to alert people, to notify people, etc. We're working on, a, on an interesting project now um, to really provide a, an interesting tracking experience. So being able you to be notified if you have been in contact with someone that had COVID so that you know that you can isolate yourself pretty quickly. So that's the kind of capability we we looking at. But yeah, I mean this is this is brilliant. We would love to 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 work on this uh, um, uh, and and help help more than than doing yeah business. Yeah, but look, it's always about business. We've got salaries to pay and things like that. But it would be great sure. to make good money and help people at the same time. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. As an example, partnering with the Nelson Mandela Foundation or the World Health yeah. Organization. Just before we end, and, and on this topic, I, I read an interesting article, I think it was last week, that we, if Google analyzed their searches per geography, they can actually very accurately predict the, an outbreak of the pandemic. And in fact, they, they were not really looking at this, but if they now look retrospectively at their data, the certain hotspot outbreaks, where people started Googling, my throat is sore, I've got a funny cough, loss of taste and smell, et cetera. So imagine we can really use that kind of technology more proactively, you know? So, um, but well, firstly, I'm so happy to chat to you. It's, it's, there are some great tech companies in South Africa. I think as South Africans, yes. we often think it's all in, 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 in Silicon Valley and all that, but yes. you guys make us proud. And uh, I love following you guys on social media. I'll thank add you. all your company detail on the, on the uh, recording. So thank you so much. And keep on doing yeah i work. appreciate that and and I, I know i'm french but it's a south african <laughs> company it's built by south african engineers it's supported by south african <laughs> business and 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 we're proud of that so yeah, yeah no thank you thank you for that i really appreciate the kind words and wow. and we are recruiting so if anyone is interested uh please fire the the your cv we'll look at it we'll do that well thank you all the best we'll chat soon Cheers. thank you Yohan. Thank you.